Well, that's, that's good. Let's really bring it out tonight on video and audio. Let's start with something from the Bible. The wages of sin is death. Let's talk about that. The wages of sin is death. Because wages fits in a little bit with cost, you know. If wages, getting paid, and then cost is almost like the flip side. That's how people can afford to buy things. Wages is more like the filling the wallet up and cost is what takes it out. And I, can, I, I do have a copy of the concordance and, and cost. You know, I would say it probably got, cost you your peace of mind, will cost you your uh, serenity, you know, cost. Um, in Christian theology, and I'm not talking the Course in Miracles, but in traditional Christian theology, the atonement was paying a ransom. A ransom is a big cost. The ransom, like humankind uh, had done something terrible to God, like, you know, take a bite out of that apple. God said, oh, here's a tree, here's a tree, and it has fruit, but there's rules. There's rules with this tree. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and I know I put it here in paradise. And ask me how duality was placed by God into paradise. Doesn't make any sense why God would put a dualistic tree <laughs> into pure oneness. It's ridiculous right away. But there's a tree of knowledge of good and evil, and there's a rule. It's just like telling a kid, don't do this. <laughs> What happens when you tell kids, don't, don't eat in the, from the candy jar? Don't eat the cookie. They'll, they'll do it. <laughs> so, here's God. So don't eat from that tree. And then they eat the apple. And then, there's a fall from grace. And the fall from grace, you don't think God's just going to sit around and let you fall, be a disobedient, you know, break the rule, break the one rule, and then say, can't let you get away from that. It's going to cost you. It's going to, mm, you're going to have to pay me back. You did it. You broke the rule. So now you have to be punished. And uh, you have to have a, there's a ransom. You're going to have to pay a cost, not just a small cost, but you're going to have to pay a big cost because that's a bad thing you did. It's the worst thing. You're disobedient. You broke the rule. Now you have to pay the cost. And the wages of sin is death. Now you're condemned to die. And you're going to die and die and die over and over. Even if you have a bunch of begats. Procreating. Begat, 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 begat. Die, 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 die. Oh, well, you think it's so good. Have sex, have fun. Begat, 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 begat. Die, die. Die, 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 die. You're going to pay a cost. The ultimate cost. And you're going to keep dying over and over if you keep sinning and you don't know who I am and who you really are and all this and this. You're just going to keep, as if God is really interacting with this crazy play that he didn't create. But that, that somehow you, there's going to be a cost and you have to pay the cost. And, and in this world, it's a world of scarcity and it's a lack where everything costs money. You know, you pay for many things in this world because it's a world of lack and, and it's a world of reciprocity, it's a world of cost, and so on and so forth. But ultimately, if you boil it down, the, the big cost is the belief that you separated from God. You know, that's the big no-no, is separating from the source. So in Christian theology, then it's like, well, there has to be a ransom. You've got to, it's a pretty big thing that you've done, you know, this separation, fall from grace business, so there's going to have to be a ransom. Just like if somebody kidnaps something of your son or your daughter or your dog or something, and something important and says, 
So I'm not going to give it back unless you pay the cost. You have to pay me something for me to give it back. It's kind of like the, the, the ego's Christian version of the thing is that you did something wrong to God. You know God's very loving. He's not really happy about the separation thing. You kind of ticked him off. He's, he's loving, he's loving, he's loving. Don't cross him. He'll be firm. And he definitely needs a ransom now to get back there. And then Jesus is going to be, he's going to send his son on a suicide mission, come and say, no, 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 this is the way that it should be. And then, boom, he's going to get crucified. And by Jesus Christ, the blood of the Lamb, the blood of the innocent one, and so on and so forth, that will pay the ransom for all humankind, and you all will be free. As soon as this innocent one is slaughtered, then it's solved. Makes no sense at all to me. And, but that ransom is the biggest cost. That's a cost. It's, it's saying, Something costs things. Now, I would say that to believe in the ego costs you the awareness of heaven, costs you the awareness of God, costs you the awareness of Christ, love, oneness, joy, happiness. And using that word in that way, it's like, wow, that's, that's a pretty severe cost in awareness, not in reality, we will say, it's really impossible in reality, but in awareness, in consciousness, it's a it's a big cost. And so, it doesn't surprise me that the Course uses that word cost, because I think if you went through, unless Jesus is speaking kind of tongue-in-cheek, which he does sometimes, and humorously, when people read it, they go, what's he saying? Is he speaking a little tongue-in-cheek? Give him, he wants to joke. Sometimes, let him joke. But sometimes, ah, oh, I can't believe he said it. But actually, you know, I think that's the cost that is talked about in the Course. You know, you're talking about, you know, you've found so many times. And then people, that people don't like that saying from the Bible, the wages of sin is death, but sin is, is missing the mark. If you go back to the original Aramaic, you know, sin is not hitting the bullseye of love and forgiveness, it's missing the mark. Well, what would you expect from missing the mark? If the mark is God and love and Christ and joy and happiness and peace and you miss the mark, what do you think? You're off into death land. I mean, the bullseye is love and the rest of the rings are all death. If you miss the target, Oh, God doesn't go, that's all right, that's close enough. It's more, it's like, you're off into error. Sin is really error. So the wages of sin is death, it's the wages of error, is the experience of separation, which is what death is. People don't like that saying, I think that's just good divine metaphysics. The wages of sin is death, should rejoice. Say, well, that's it. I'm, I'm going to really learn not, not to sin. <laughs> if that's the case, I, I don't want to keep missing the mark. I want to hit the mark. I want to know thyself, what the Greeks talks about. I want to, you know, realize. I want self-realization, or may as well call it self-actualization. I would rather have that than missing the mark. And yeah, I think there is a, it's, there is a cost. To seeming to miss the mark, not in reality, but in awareness, when we're not tuned in, when we're not aligned with Source, then there's the illusion of suffering. And I always say when people ask me about suffering, it's just not fun. 